All righty. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Hurley Investments Market View Commentary for April Fools. Uh, I really want to start today talking about Micron. So let's. All right. Let's start with Micron. Uh, a lot of individuals have Micron somewhere in their portfolio. And Micron got an upgrade from Bank of America, moving its price target higher. So here we have Micron's chart. If you were going to do some technical analysis, what would you tell me about Micron? I'm going to type it down here at the bottom. I'm going to make it bigger as well. Technical analysis on Micron. What would you tell me if you were doing your technical analysis on Micron? Nobody's allowed to be quiet today. Overbought. And now there's something else that was said there. Who said that? Mod overbought and extended from the 50-day simple moving average. So what defines overextended or extended from the 50-day? Little technical analysis, right? When we're talking about being overextended, when a company is overextended, we're looking at the blue line. I'm going to highlight it. We're looking at the blue line and the price. So the price is 124.30, and the blue line 50 day is $92.83. So why would that be important? <laughs> so Lee kind of nailed it. Mean reversion, right? Or Abraham, mean reversion, likely to fall some, not a good place to buy for a risk to reward basis. It's ridiculous, right? If we do the math, actually, what's considered normal? for the, uh, the the dispersion of the 50 day anyone know what it is when does it get extended what's that percentage anyone know and if you don't you can just type it in there you go mod great guess over 10% is considered extended. And in reality, 10 to 12.5% is the range, can't type today, sorry, is the range we see a pullback. And the pullback is to the 50-day again. And it kind of bounces along. So if we're looking at it, in this case, 66 up to 75, that's actually about 15%. Here it comes back. We're now sitting at 70 up to 73, pulled back. Here's the big one. 73 up to 80. There's 10% pulled back. Another 10% pulled back. Extended up to that 15% range. 87 on an 79-ish. Comes back, building a base, getting closer to the 50-day. Pretty neat. I mean, up here, 
90, 12 and a half percent comes back down, pops up here to 100, 87 and a half. So there's 12 percent, comes back down, builds a base. We have earnings. It should be building a base, letting that 50 day catch up. Right now, 124.30. One twenty four thirty minus ninety two point eight three. So this is where it gets mathematical if you're dealing with numbers, right? One hundred twenty four dollars and thirty cents minus the fifty day simple moving average, which is at uh, ninety two point eight three equals $31.47. If we take that and divide it by the 50 day of 92.83, we just get a simple 92.83, 33.9% higher. than the 50 day simple moving average, which means it probably has a pullback to that $100 level. Partially, maybe it could be 103, partially because the 50 day simple moving average will move up, but there's a thought that it's probably way overextended it's 33.9% higher than the 50-day simple moving average. And anyone understand Elliott waves or Fibonacci? A little herd mentality in six months, it has a 100% return. The scary thing is it's usually looking at a 50% pullback. If it goes from 62, 62 and a half up to 124, it's there. We would be looking for about a $30 drop. And that $30 drop to lose half of that gain puts it right at that 94, 95. I'm not a big fan of Elliott Wave, Fibonacci. In fact, I wonder if we were to put on Bollinger Bands, it bounced one, two, three, four, five days. It was outside of the Bollinger Bands. What normally happens when it hits those Bollinger Bands? Bounces outside, test the lows. Bounces outside, test the median line. Bounces outside, test the lows. Hits it, test the lows. Bounces outside the base, hits the lows. If we just went to the median line, that sits at about 102.64. It reverts to the mean. That's a great way to say it. Um, if you were to look at any technical analysis chart, Micron is just overbought and it's overextended. And these are the numbers that you're seeing to tell you, hey, Houston, we have a problem. If you were to tell me if what's gonna happen next, is it gonna go, Higher, lower, or sideways, what would you guys think? Higher, lower, or sideways? Yeah, Lee says lower. Anyone else? Higher, lower, or sideways? Lower. Either sideways, let the day catch up, or lower. 
our expectation was lower as well. And someone just said it there. Someone just said, time to buy puts. Ooh, I love that idea. It's time to buy puts. So for accounts today, because of what we see today, because Micron, even with the uh, Bank of America upgrade, is so overextended, we purchased $123 long puts. And I believe they are the April 28th, four weeks out in time. Yes, a stock is bullish. And I know someone's going to tell me, if Lance was here today, Lance would say, what are you doing, Hurley? Are you buying a bearish position on a bullish moving stock? Because I tease people about that. I usually will suggest against it. But for right now, if you used an Elliott Wave, if you used Fibonacci, if you used Bollinger Bands, if you used simple technical analysis, it's way overextended. And when this happens, past history shows it will probably pull back and it will probably pull back to somewhere to that 102 to 104.5 range. This is the numbers behind overextended. These numbers are justifying where the stock needs to go. Now, the good news is on the high side, I thought we were at 131 or 139 for the year. If they announce hey, we're going to get 10 billion of the, uh, if they announce they're going to get 10 billion on the, uh, oh, what do you call it? On the chip fund, then yes, we're going to see a lot more that will happen between now and then. We have to adjust our numbers. That will give some justification but we don't have it right now. All we have are our basic numbers. 10% is considered extended. It can go up to 10 to 12 and a half. There's some, there's some leeway there, but we are 33.9% higher than our 50 day simple moving average. We are so overextended we purchased long puts today expecting a drop down. And we will most likely double up on the drop down because we have pretty average normal price points. We will probably double up on the way down until we hit the 105 stock price. And none of this is voodoo. None of this is anything weird. This is just defining the terminology that you hear on TV into a numbers type of uh, understanding so this is what we do to better understand what's happening and why and this is why we are taking a peek at what's happening in our market or our individual positions and are doing the best we can to to really over protect for you into the future just a couple things that we noticed over the weekend. Yesterday, the futures 
called for a positive 0 0.04, excuse me, 42% opening on the S&P 500. We finished today down. Finish today down 0 0.20. And not only that, not only did we finish down 0 0.20 today, but we couldn't hold the gains or any gains for the day. Opened up and went right down the other way. That is a bad sign at the start of a new quarter. Literally, I texted Keev yesterday. Looks like new money coming in is buying into positions to open up a pretty easy day tomorrow. Anything but a pretty easy day. With that said, futures are down today. After hours, watch it bounce back higher tomorrow. All we have is factory orders. So there's not a whole lot going on by way of of economic reports tomorrow. And overseas, pretty sure I saw, uh, Asian markets all look slightly higher. So that's kind of, uh, that's interesting to see. Uh, someone just typed in, I think that's very interesting. Lots of Fed speakers this week. Uh, agreed. There are lots of Fed speakers this week. But for right now, the Fed is pretty much out of the picture. We already know that they have a three month time frame on PCE and CPI numbers, which we're only a month into it right now. We still have April and May. June would be their first rate hike or excuse me, their rate cut, and they're data dependent. They already told us their flight plan. And if we get a hiccup, like we typically will get in May, it's historical, prices go up pre-summer, and everything from food to transportation to gas, Fed might not hike until August. Maybe it's September. I think it's a September. I don't think they have an August meeting. They might not hike until September and October. Justifying, hey, it's too close to the election that people won't think the economy is great. Uh, it might scare people to think, oh, they have to hike because the economy kind of sucks right now. There's a lot of uncertainty and I do not put, I'm not putting any credence to Fed speakers right now, just to let you know. This week, more than anything, we have our ADP employment on Wednesday and the average work week numbers on Friday. If we don't see some of those numbers coming down, it can really get dicey if the Fed will, will even do a rate cut before the November-December meetings. I guess it's really December. Let me take a quick check and let me find out. So we had a January-March. We have an April-May for April 30th and the 1st. We have a June-July, September-November-December. So there is no October. So really... In the near future, if they want to see three months of inflation, June, July, September, November, December, there would be your five meetings for a rate cut. Typically in May, you get a higher reading, which would reset June, July, August, which means September, November, December would be our rate meetings. If they don't wanna do the election, and it, uh, I guess influence the election, that throws September out, we would have November and December for a rate cut. And that's what we're up against. 
that's truly what we're up against, and that's what we worry about. Right now, in all honesty, right now, Hurley Investments is letting stocks run, and we have done so since the earnings season. They had good earnings season. We pulled stuff off, and we've been letting things run. You guys should like where your accounts are at right now. And this is what we've decided to do. Just let some stocks run. All right, here we go. Uh, we've got more people here. So I'm going to make one more housekeeping type of, of comment. Uh, we have already voted for Disney. Uh, all of us. Uh, we ran everything through. A lot of non-woke, a lot of okay not putting movies out there where uh, you have girls or boys kissing each other of the same sex, especially if it's considered a G-rated or a cartoon. Uh, we did not vote for Chapex to get a golden parachute. There's no reason he should be paid for the poor performance he's done. Uh, we did not say two board seats we're willing to compromise and do a board seat for pelts. Um, we want Iger's and future um, CEOs, their compensation to be tied to the stock price. And that's just where we've been at for that. All right, uh, the big picture found it really interesting it was a fast start to the year for many of the mega cap stocks, which in turn made a fast start for the market cap weighted S&P 500. Naturally, there are now a lot of calls that suggest the market is due for a consolidation period or correction, generally defined as a 10% pullback from the high. The churning we have seen in the market most recently is part of a consolidation process but a corrective move at the index level has yet to unfold. Still, the market has come a long way in a short time. So it is unreasonable to think it'll keep running at the pace it has been. The valuation, the market cap weight S&P is stretched, but the equal weight S&P 500 is still relatively attractive form. It's not though. Could there, and I'm changing it a little bit, there could be, or could there be a great reward chasing after the momentum stocks? But there's an inherently larger degree of risk in doing so at this point if the crowd looks elsewhere, interest rates keep rising, or growth disappoints. To be sure, no one knows what surprises lurk around the corner, but right in front of investors is an equal weight opportunity to stay invested with a lower risk profile as loose ends get tied up. Again, people are expecting or reading the numbers. The expectation is things should fall by 10% or the market gives up half of its gains, which means the S&P should fall by about 5%. Those pullbacks of 3 to 7% are expected. A correction of 10% would really make the market look cheap again running into an election it's out there now if we can take a look at our charts what a run if you look at the dow jones industrial average it seems to be rounding it seems to be topping off there in fact we could have a double top looking at this chart forming right now. S&P 500 doesn't look as rounded as the Dow, but boy, hitting that same point looking like a double top. They would have to lose 5% to get back down to 5,056 or the 50 day. I could expect it. I, I've seen the run. 
were overextended. If you look at the NASDAQ, it's come down the last couple weeks. The question is, is it building a base? Notice how it's moving sideways and the 50 day is catching up. Might be really interesting to see if it takes off a little bit higher. If it were to do so, again, it's the mega caps and maybe Micron at the way things are looking. Where will the S&P end April? I'm saying it's down 2%, but I'd probably expect some kind of V form. If I was looking at April or our chart pattern we'll look at, I would expect a drop down with a recovery. Our 10% drop down or even 5% in the S&P, gaining back three, three and a half percent of it. That would be my expectation for April. We're waiting to see what happens and we're starting to take some precautions on stocks already. Earnings, nothing really happening. Levi's and Sportsman Warehouse on Wednesday. Economic reports, construction spending was supposed to be up 0 0.6, was down 0 0.3. ISM manufacturing though was positive. It showed expansion. Not what you want to see if you're looking for a rate hike. Very interesting because we have conflicting data that our economic reports are showing us right now. Construction spending is supposed to be up 0 0.6. It was down 0 0.3. Almost missed by 100 basis points. ISM manufacturing is supposed to be showing growth, but still in contraction below 50. 50.3 showed expansion. Conflicting data. I'd hate to be a Fed chair, right? ADP employment on Wednesday, expected to be 150,000. Anything 100,000 to 50,000 would be good. Average work week on Friday, non-farm payroll. It's the corrected or the more accurate version of the ADP. It's set to be at 200,000. Anything 100 to 140 would be good. Just some things to be paying attention to for our economic reports that come out, especially on Friday. It'll be a mover. All right, uh, let's see what I have here. Um, if you're looking to see where our next conflict is going to happen, I don't know if you've been noticing Russia attacking, cutting power off of Ukraine. But the war in Israel will probably take a front stage to the war in Ukraine. If you're worried about where things are at, this is not going to help you. But the U.S., again, our administration is, they call it winding the divide between the White House and Israel's current government. We can't make the only, how do I say this? The only administration that makes more mistakes than the U.S. government right now seems to be Boeing. That tells you where I'm, where I'm, where I'm not happy with our, our government. And it's not just the administration in the White House. It's, it kind of goes across the House and the Senate as well. So I'm not picking on Democrats. Uh, I'm just not happy with our policy our government in general right now. And that's something that you should be paying attention to. This will be our next big make the markets have a correction. I found a very interesting article on the salary a single person needs to live in the 25 major cities. Just something to see what's expensive out there right now. And just some things to think of in regards to how much you're making or where you might want to retire. Maud's laughing at me. Um, all right. BlackRock came out and said, hey, to think you're okay to retire at 65 is a little bit crazy. If we're living longer, we should work longer. 
we're not going to have Social Security down the road. Very interesting article. If you're looking at Social Security and wanting it 20 years from now, might need to take a second look at what the government's thinking by way of a Social Security paycheck or retirement age. Um, Coinbase, or I'm gonna I'm gonna pick on a little bit in regards to some of these uh, some of these tokens and Bitcoin. Coinbase again is in trouble. Kevin, this is a little bit old. It is, but literally, Securities and Exchange Commission is finding more things that they're not satisfied with in regards to Coinbase. I would not be owning this stock. I would be worried about an exchange collapsing or closing. Sam Blankenfield, uh, Bankman, I don't know his last name. I've been calling him Blankenfield. Bankman Freed's journey. Here's a crypto guy who made up crypto and lied. Just as big as Madoff, just as bad as Madoff. Supposedly, it's going to get paid back. The numbers don't add up for people to get paid back, so don't think. I, I wish you would have spent closer to 40 years instead of 25 years in jail. Very interesting. China shows an increase in factory activity. This one just came out to basically yesterday evening, but this morning, China seems to be picking up again. Something to pay attention to. This is why in a down market, we're probably going to be up overall. We really nice to see uh, Baidu up and Meta up and Micron up. Good to see those moving for us to offset down days in other areas. Maybe we have China at a place where it can bounce and rally higher. Uh, a quick video. Very interesting video on what Disney is doing, or what they have done the past six months since they fired Chapex at the end of 2022. Basically, last year was Iger's first year doing some work. Very interesting video on what Disney is trying to do to make those changes for where I want to say middle America will be happy with Disney again. So an interesting, if you just click on that link, it'll bring up a, a quick video. With that said, any questions you guys have for me tonight? Um, Mod, overbought account on Micron or uh, Marathon Oil. Uh, for some of you, you may have been called out on Marathon Oil with, with a short call or you're going to be. So I put positions in to, to keep playing that position. Uh, it's a little interesting. Marathon Oil hasn't even hit these, these uh, how do I say it? They haven't even hit the time period when oil should jump higher. So for a couple people, uh, Marathon Oil bounced away from us. It got away from us. We re-entered positions to continue the move higher. Uh, yes, the numbers look semi-similar, but not quite. Um, any place we can get access to these articles? Yes. Uh, I post this on the myhurleyinvestment.com blog site. So when this gets posted, most likely sometime tomorrow, my Hurley Investment singular.com. You can literally, these links will be active. You can click on these links and it'll show the actual um, article that I have listed here. I do have them so you can read them as well, though. But they all get put on the My Hurley Investment.com blog site. So if anyone is new, 
wants to hear this recording, wants to read um, these notes, copy and paste these notes to study them for yourself, refer back to them, um, you'll get that on myhurleyinvestment.com. All these articles to watch the video, you'll just be able to click it, it'll click on it, it'll ask you to open up in a new tab and you usually wanna say yes. And you can watch a four and a half minute video on what Disney's done to uh, to try to appease everyday people. All right, hey, appreciate everyone being here today. I hope this helps you work these numbers again on what overextended means and what you're looking for, how all these charts and numbers go together. If you do have any questions, don't hesitate to email info at hurleyinvestments.com and I can uh, get some more information out to you if it will be helpful. Guys, I look forward to seeing you on Thursday morning. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you then. Bye-bye, everyone.